Hey everyone, my name is Fiona. This is Dr. Ken Gartner, who has been my piano teacher for about seven or eight years. More than that. <laughs> More than that. I think you were a teenager. <laughs> yeah, we actually met when I was uh, performing in San Francisco. I was doing the, the Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto, mm. and, and he was the only person that was not impressed <laughs> with my playing. So actually after the concert, he actually showed me some technique exercises to kind of help my playing. So he then became my piano teacher. So Ken, can you tell us a little about your upbringing, how you got into piano? Well, my mom was a piano teacher and a voice teacher and a violin teacher and an elocution teacher and a few other t t kinds of teachers. So uh, she studied with Leopold Auer and uh, that was her violin teacher. And I can't remember who she studied with in terms of piano. And so obviously she was my first teacher. Okay, and then like as far as, you know, what got you on the more serious academic path for piano playing? Like what kind of separated you from it being like a hobby to this is what you want to do as your profession? Well, that, that came uh, when I was in college, you know, so, uh, but I'd always been a, a, a pianist, you know, and uh, I also was a juvenile delinquent. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so but that's a different story. <laughs> right. Um, so when pianists first come to you, how do you kind of diagnose where they're at? Like what, what kinds of things stand well, out? to be honest with you, most piano teachers are incorrect. So let me demonstrate. I have, uh, I start kids as early as 2.5. So we play a game. I say, okay, Matilda put your fourth finger on this black thing here. This one is very close to mommy. And put this finger on this. Okay, let's call each one four. Now your middle finger is gonna go on the middle black. So you got one more black thing, and what finger do you think you're going to put on it? Very good. So let's call this one four. Let's call this one three. And Matilda, what do we call this one? Yeah, you're right, two. Play four. Play three. Play two. Go back to three. Play four three times. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's the end of the first lesson for a two and a half or three-year-old. I give six-minute lessons to two-and-a-half-year-olds. Mom comes two, three, four times a week, depending on her schedule, not mine. And uh, what we can then do, let's assume that the uh, student has now done that a couple of weeks in a row. So I'm gonna ask you to cross your hands, and now let's play two, three. underneath this one. Let's do the same thing. Two, three, four, three, two, three times. That's only two times. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, every piano teacher that I have encountered, and it's in the thousands, is playing 100% incorrectly. The idea did not come from the piano teacher herself, himself, itself. It came from the way he, she, or it was taught. So, the way I teach scales, we do two keys simultaneously. So, one black key, one black key, Okay, let's try this. You don't like that? We can try this. Let's do the chromatics.
things that you can do with that. And um, when I finished my PhD at NYU, I, my PhD is in piano technique. And I have not seen anybody, uh, I've been in touch with about 8,000 other pianists and piano teachers around the world. Um, I taught at the Shanghai Institute. Uh, now it's the Shanghai Conservatory. So anyway, do you have any questions? Uh, I'm wanting to know why there's so much emphasis on technique. Is that, do you think that's the foundation of being able to play music? Does well, that get left uh, out a lot I, with other I, piano I, teachers? I'm not really, my, my PhD is the uh, expansion of pianism. And basically it's since 1945. The piano at one point was not, uh, didn't have 88 keys. And uh, there are pianos which have more keys. There's Bersendorfer's and uh, uh, Fibonacci's and all, all kinds of types and stuff of pianos. The piano here has strings by, and hammers by Ari Isaac. And the strings on my left, uh, the, the bottom string would be normally, if we were to straighten it out, would be about, um, 155 feet, but uh, the Steinway to my left is a normal Steinway. This has keys, uh, sorry, strings and hammers by Ari Isaac. So mm -hmm. Isaac hammers and strings. Uh, Steinway didn't uh, <laughs> accept his ideas, but the sound, because the strings are now twice as long as normal Steinway strings, Now, the other piano is 100% Steinway. And it's the third Steinway because you can trade your old Steinway in. They'll give you credit for everything you paid for it. But this is not, this has Ari Isaac's hammers and strings. Not a bad piano. I, I, every time I came a better, uh, across a better, uh, an instrument I liked more whenever I visited Steinway, they would give you 100% of what you paid for the old one, mm -hmm. and I just added some more cash. Mm -hmm. So let me go back to, uh, when I teach, my students work on the modified instrument. I put myself through Juilliard uh, by teaching at Babel Piano Company. And I originally paid $2,000 for this. Wow. So. <laughs> well, that's a deal. <laughs> it was. Now I've, I've had, I have it appraised uh, every year or two for insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what other questions can I answer for you? Yeah, I'm curious in the technique exercises that you teach. Okay. Why are they so important? Well, you have to strengthen and strengthen your fingers. I noticed that 99% of the people who come to me play this way. Mm -hmm. So they're not controlling the key. You have to control the descent of the key. Uh, give me a note, Fiona. Mm, C? G? G, sure. S a low one or a high one? Uh, let's do a low one. Okay, this one or that one? That one. The middle one? Yeah. All right, so if you push the key down fast, you're gonna get kind of a, uh, kind of a heavy sound. If you push the key down slowly, now I keep my action regulated very, very, very often. And by pushing the key down very slowly, you're controlling the speed of the hammer. The hammer is not connected to the key. There's a whole bunch of gears and wheels and levers and stuff like that in an action on a piano. The action on this piano and that piano is 100% Steinway, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they're adjusted. There's, you can turn uh, the screw type things that are there, maybe an eighth of a turn and you'll
So one of the exercises I have students do is similar to the, what I just did now. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of people don't really know that all they do is play. That sounds yucky. And they don't know how to pedal. You have to listen to the note and if it's going to be resolved, you need to control the descent of the key. There is one woman who's teaching piano, and when I was her teacher, she would play this. Oh, wow. Scared me. <laughs> so, do two, do different rhythms, and... Um, Now this is a copy of a book by Alberto Honas, J-O-N-A-S, and he started writing this, oh, he writes it in four languages. He writes it in English, German, French, and Espanol. And there are eight books. The basis of my PhD dissertation was if it's in the Honas book, then I'm not going to talk about it. I'm talking about further explanations and further expansions in terms of technique. But this is the basis. This is, everything is written in four languages. World War II came around, uh, or the Depression came around, and here is an example of an exercise. You're holding down these, but I do not teach with the hand directly in front of the body. I teach it here. That way you go straight in. This is a more complicated position. This is the easier position. So you're gonna hold those down, and then it's gonna be a pianissimo, and a P, and a mezzo piano, and a mezzo forte, and a forte, and a fortissimo, and a forte fortissimo, and then go back down. Of course, you do need a piano which will respond. So, not only is this one written in four languages, but the depression came, so he only was able to write it in English and I believe Hungarian. <laughs> so, and uh, when I wrote my PhD dissertation, well, why are you upside down? I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and these are exercises, and here is the explanation of the exercises. And he also gives you, you know, So every time you play something, he has examples of how this particular technique is going to work for you. And um, when I wrote my PhD dissertation, I st stated in the introduction that everything that is in the Honas books is not going to be discussed in my dissertation. My dissertation is called The Expansion of Pianism Since 1945. And of course, we have so you need to control the descent of the key. That's the first thing that I try to teach. Not too much. Still too much. I should do my own exercises more often. <laughs> so what questions do you have? Uh, what are your favorite pieces to play? Hmm. Well, I like the Scriabi.
Well, we can sit here for another 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm very lucky to have this. Mm -hmm. So this piano has strings from Ari Isaac. And he's a blind fellow who creates the strings. And I also have Isaac Hammers, mm -hmm. which have a slight piece of metal beneath the felt. But they're larger than... Steinway hammers, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I make my recordings on this instrument. Mm -hmm. Now you uh, recently learned, uh, you were going to perform, right? Yeah. What, what pieces did you have in your repertoire for that? <sighs> well, I, I usually pack a, a, a few and I let the audience choose mm -hmm. from a list of pieces. Mm -hmm. So the audience now has a vested interest in hearing what they want to hear. Right. You know, I mean, I, I played a little bit of that Scriabin piece for you. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I, some, I sometimes start, I, I don't believe, Bach actually thought the piano was a fad. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and wouldn't last, but yeah. obviously uh, he didn't like it. <laughs> probably don't play Bach with much pedal. And some persons say, well, you should use pedal. Bach probably would have used pedal if he, <laughs> he didn't like the piano. Mm -hmm. He liked uh, having children, but he didn't like <laughs> the piano. So he thought mm -hmm. it was a, a fad. Mm -hmm. You're, you played a lot of Chopin, I remember, and mm -hmm. also Liszt. So what is it about those composers or those pieces that uh, really speak to you? Hmm. Well, I, 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 I use the word congruence, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a great deal of, uh, there's a lot more to Chopin. For example, if I'm in C minor, if I'm in C major, the relative minor is A. So Chopin takes the key of A major then changes it in opus 40 number two to C minor. So you have a very, very bleak construct there. And then choose pieces like you, you kind of asked the audience one time what is the connection with all the different six pieces that you had played and they were all I think either circle of fifths or they were all descending by a half step or something like that I can't or the I, I intervals think they all had a major six starting oh okay Sonata, how the first movement's connected with the third movement. Yeah. Well, we have, and then we have. All right, so it's a C sharp minor arpeggio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, what, what drew me to you as a teacher was the, the focus on the technique, because that was really what was holding back that was really what was holding back my playing was not having the strong enough technique at the piano because I was choosing really difficult pieces to play. Yeah. Like I was working on the, the Rachmaninoff third piano concerto and my technique was not really good at all. Well, you have this incredible musicality. You have a built in, you know, I would say that 80% of your gene pool is music, mm. you know, and, uh, it was a privilege to work with you, and uh, thank you very much for uh, employing me as your teacher. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, once a teacher, always a teacher. <laughs> I, I will still uh, call Ken up if I have questions on music, or how do I teach this to a student? 
Um, what does this mean in the music? So I think once a teacher, always a teacher. Yeah. Well, there's a piece that, uh, there's a book that uh, I was introduced to at the Juilliard Introductory Pageant by David Waxman. So the first piece is, oh, that's not really good. What you really want to do is play the same thing. You need to look for patterns. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when was the last time you read Stop on a Stop Sign? I don't remember. You react basically to the shape of the sign. Mm. And if you're colorblind, you cannot really see the difference between a red and a green light. So you need to know that the red light is on the left and the green light is on the right, mm -hmm. you know? So, and I believe in, in, in verticalities, the red light's on top. Mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. Because it was red, oh, I'm not totally and sure. yellow would be the middle one. Yeah, of course. So we always know yellow's in the middle one. Mm -hmm. um, the set of nocturnes that I did, um, I think I started with the E flat, then I did the A flat, then I did... <laughs> That's an A flat. Mm -hmm. The E flat was, and then the whole the, the the whole catch with all four of those, they will have a major sixth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was pretty clever that you chose them. Yeah. Based on the so, angle. this is not connected to this. Oh, the composer doesn't write it as a slurred note. It's, it's... no, it's a, it's it's even dotted in some. I I, I have to look for the original one. Mm, I, I, mm -hmm. so, I do have a question about like what's the biggest uh, thing that you see with pianists that come into you? I know that like they do the finger. Well, the first spaghetti thing, finger we, thing we really want to do is strengthen the finger. Mm -hmm. The second thing is most of them come with a right, they don't control. right, yeah, lack of control and. I hear a lot of this. The hammering. <laughs> but I only have one or two pieces, you know, like the, the Cacciaturian. And, and, and so on and so forth, so. Mm -hmm. There's well, also the uh, Toccata Ostinato. That one also uses yeah. the... Well, mm -hmm. Robert Palmer was one of my teachers at Cornell. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would play that <laughs> everywhere. Usually if I played that, I won the contest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he wrote other stuff, but the Toccata Ostinato is really the, the thing that has put him on the map. Right. You know, and I also did Karel Husa's Sonata, he was my teacher of conducting and composition at Cornell. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I showed you the Lauren Kaiser piece, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And I, pl I premiered that at Town Hall at my debut, and the New York Times didn't like the piece. Mm -hmm. they, I, I'm looking for the review, but I can't find it. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I got a fairly decent review. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then which uh, composers 1950 to the present have you performed their works? Well, whatever comes across my, uh, my, my desk or my piano. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did the Charles Ives, the Concord Sonata? Well, I've thought about that, but uh, at this point, um, having studied with John Kirkpatrick, you know, uh, who played the damn thing, and I actually uh, became his student at Cornell. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I went to Cornell. Mm. And uh, he had started me on that, and uh, some interesting things. But he also then went to Yale in my senior year, so I didn't have him. Uh, he wanted to work on the Ives archives, mm. and that alliteration... <laughs> I'm going to work on the Ives archives. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he was totally different from the Levine student that uh, I had studied with down in Stanton, Virginia. Mm. And it was very, very, very strange until I got used to his style of playing. Right. And uh, when I was in Stanton, 
spelled Staunton, S-T-A-U-N-T-O-N. Um, I had three 40-minute lessons a week. Wow. So, um, <laughs> for four years, wow. you know. And a friend of mine, Don Walker, there, there were three of us. I, Don Walker, and a, a freshman uh, pianist. And uh, we went everywhere. If I won something, they came in second or third. If I came in second or third, uh, they, one of them would come in first. So, and it, it made no difference. Uh, Stanton is spelled S-T-A-U-N-T-O-N. <laughs> it's uh, close to Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Uh -huh. You had a, you studied with uh, Marcus Adele? I was with Adele Marcus. Adele yeah. Marcus, yeah. And uh, Don Walker, who had been with me down in Stanton, he, he was a townie. I was in the, the, the uh, military school. Uh, and so he suggested that I study with her. And uh, so I called her up. Juilliard started about September 20th. So I uh, arrived back in New York and uh, Don had said, give her a call and uh, tell her I told you to call. And uh, so um, she was known as probably having the best technique at the Juilliard. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. You know, and so I called her up and she, we made an appointment and I go down to uh, uh, West End Avenue where all the penthouses were and she was up in a penthouse mm -hmm. and uh, I ring her bell and she says, who are you? I said, I'm Ken, we have a, an appointment, I have a piano lesson. She said, I don't remember you. <laughs> anyway, so I then, uh, after the first year when I was with Marcus, who really worked very well on my technique, mm. and when I was playing the two Brahms uh, Rhapsodies, she would sit on a couch which was about 40 feet wide <laughs> with her entire class, and he said, oh, Ken feels Brahms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Then I studied with Steuermann, who was Arnold Schoenberg's pianist for three years, and uh, that was it. Mm -hmm. Did you meet uh, Horowitz before? Freundlich? Uh, no, 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 um, Horowitz, the pianist. Yeah, we, um, I met Horowitz, I think I was working with Steuermann and there was, uh, he had a very, very famous student who invited his entire class up there and uh, we were playing, I'm trying to think, Horowitz? Hmm. Yeah, I, I had met Horowitz. I, I remember going to Connecticut and I, can't remember the circumstances mm -hmm. at this point. You know, so. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, th this is uh, Dr. Ken Gartner. I'm Fiona. Thanks for watching. And um, if you want to get a hold of you, if people want to reach out to you, where can they find you? Uh, just call me 415 4440618. So yeah, if you're looking for a piano teacher, uh, Ken lives in San Rafael, and also you're teaching remotely as well. Yeah, I have. I have, I have a six-year-old in Texas. I have a uh, an adult woman in Cabo San Lucas. I have a a woman of uncertain age in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and <laughs> uh, one more, and I can't think of where he is. But it, you know. If you need some help and, uh, you know, when you come, you audition me, not I. Mm, right, right. So you decide whether or not you want to continue work with me. Right, that's so. a good point. Because um, when you're applying to schools and stuff like that, or, you know, teachers in general, you want to make sure that the teacher is going to help you achieve your goals that you're setting out to work on. Cool. Yeah. All right. See ya. Hasta luego.